bit better. If you were to look at this IR, first off, what would you know, what notable features would you see in it that, that would tell you something? Ketone. Okay, ketone. Yeah, look at this peak. First of all, there's no alcohol peak out here. Okay, so we can rule out alcohol for this particular compound. If we look down here at 17, it looks like 17, 18 point something or other, the most in, I see the most intense band in the compound. Oh, it's another. Okay, so that's, that's of note. Okay. Notice that I have no carbon hydrogen stretches above 3,000. They're all below 3,000. What does that tell me? No carbon carbon double bonds. Okay, so whatever is here is, is connected through carbon carbon single bonds. Okay. Now, besides the presence of the carbonyl band, which is here, I see no evidence of an OH group making it a carboxylic acid. I also don't see two peaks at 27 and 28. 27, 28. And so, as someone suggested it was a ketone, it, it, it sure looks like a ketone. Does that make sense? It could be an ester. Um, but at this point, we'll, we're, we're going to make the assumption that it's a ketone. Are you okay with that? What would, what would signify an ester? There, you, the only way you get the ester as opposed to a ketone is by having formula information knowing that there's two oxygens rather than one. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, in this particular case, I'll tell you that there's only one. Okay. All right. So a little we, we, are you okay with what we've extracted from the ion? There's a little dimple up there. We wouldn't pay attention to that. You're talking about... That's a 35, 32. Yeah, what, what is 34. that guy? Is it an overtone from the... That's the, the overtone of 13. this. Okay. Should be double the amount, right? Should be just about double the amount, even, even though it's not, not marked. If this is 17 and 16, did I say 18 or 16? 16. It looks like it's 16. So it ought to be out there around 34, 32. Okay. If it were actually marked, if it's actually an overtone. Okay, so that, that is our infrared data. Now let's look at the proton NMR and see what we can surmise from this. And notice that I don't have anything remarkably downfield. For this signal, what we've got is around 2. Point, a little below 2.5. All right? Now, what I've got here are all kinds of things. So I've got a big singlet here that says it's three hydrogens. I've got a triplet. What is that? Does that say three? Uh, okay. Actually, I don't know what the original is. Yeah, it says three hydrogens. I've got, I can probably make a laser here. I you can't see my laser on the screen too bad. Uh, this is two hydrogens, and this is two hydrogens. Okay. Uh, so let's let's put together, and this is this is how I would use NMR. I've got in the structure, I've got a CH3 attached to a carbon that has no hydrogen on it. How do I know that? Because of the single. Because of the single. So that's got to be in there somehow. Furthermore, it's fairly far downfield. It's past two. Mm -hmm. Okay, are you okay with that? Then I've got another three hydrogens here that are split into a triplet. So I have to have that somewhere. Okay with that so far? Yeah. That's what the NMR is telling me. Now, the two CH2 groups, one of them is a triplet, and one of them is a one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe. So I've got a CH2 that's got to be next to a CH2 only. Does that make sense? Now, we, what, what do we know about the compound? It's a ketone. Two ketones, so. One way that this could work is if I have that. Can you see what I'm talking about? In other words, that's one way to make that, that methyl group sit apart from everything else is have the ketone right next to it. Because that's going to make this a single. Mm -hmm. Further off, further, this, because of its proximity, this is going to be a little further downfield, which it is. Does that make sense? Now, 
this guy is going to be one of these two. Because we're we've got in this particular case, we've got one, two, three, four signals, and we've kind of got four kinds up there now. Here's two, here's the other one, there's three, and these guys are one of these has to be one of these. So this thing is going to have to put together with what we've got. Uh, are you all right? What again? Here's what we've done: is we've taken the NMR pattern, the signal, and created pieces that have to be there. We, we haven't connected them together yet. We don't know how they assemble. But what I, it, this is kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. Once I know what the pieces are, I can put together a reasonable suggestion for the structure. Does that make sense? What What looks to me like a possibility is this. Here's this unit here. This is this part right here, along with what we've got. Does that make sense? This, this guy should be pretty far down the field, and it should be a triplet. Yes? Yeah, I, I said one of the CH2s has to be a next to a CH2 because of the triplet right there. Okay. Now, I don't, I don't know about that guy, but if this guy is like this, what should this look like? If these two, C, if these two hydrogens are in this kind of a structure, how many neighbors do they have? Five. Five. So this ought to appear as a, as a six. six. Yeah. Does that make sense? So this looks realistic. This looks reasonable. It's consistent with the IR. It's consistent with the with the proton NMR. Now, if I look at this from a, a, our carbon thirteen NMR, how many kinds of carbon are here? Four. Four. It looks like five. 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 Yeah. One of them will be way downfield. Two kind of downfield, and these two will be kind of normal. So what we should expect then? Here's our proton NMR. Let me zoom in a bit. Or I mean our carbon 13 NMR. And again, what do we do with deuterated chloroform? Ignore. ignore. We ignore it. So one, two, three, four, five. Which carbon is that? Good carbonyl. That's the carbonyl carbon. These two carbons should be moderately down the field. Okay, so that would be these two, and then these two should be in almost their normal position. Right here. Does that make sense? So the C13 NMR seems to make sense as well. Do you do it in that order? I guess I maybe it's, I usually kind of jump over to C13 first to count my carbons that I look you know, at. You don't need to do it in my order. Okay. You can do it that way. Right. Um, if I, I, I like to go to the IR first because I like to know what I'm working with. Okay. Okay. But then yeah. you can do C13 and then proton or, or vice versa. I, I like to get into the meat of it. As soon as I know that I've got a ketone or whatever, I like to get right into it and try and figure out how it's put together. So you go straight. Yeah. Yeah. Now, did that make sense? Okay. I have another one for this. <laughs> That's going on here too. And again, let's look at the IR. That's awesome. I don't store them up in All right. What do do? This one is, to look at this, this is somewhat disheartening. Yeah, it's ugly. Because I don't see some of the really neat features that are easy to identify. There's no alcohol there. There's no carbon okay. Notice, let me, let me read the numbers from the original. Right? Here, I've got 16 or under my four. Okay, what's that probably? That's probably a carbon carbon double bond, very likely in your conjugate system. Like that. So based on your table, you should be able to pull that out. I look up here, and I've got some at 2930, some at 2959, I've got one at 3028, and one at 3063. What does that tell me? Good. Double and single bond. Yeah, carbon carbon double bonds, and I've got carbon carbon single bond both. Does that make sense? <coughs> this looks like just a hydrocarbon. Okay, nothing but carbon and hydrogen present, and there's good strong evidence to indicate that there's double bonds in it. In fact, 
maybe even a bit of benzene rich. Okay? Now, in older books that we don't use anymore, right in this region, these little peaks, which kind of almost look like noise, actually can be interpreted. If you've got a benzene ring, there's a, there, there are charts out there that you can get your hands on that will say, oh, this is a benzene ring with one thing on it. Or a benzene ring with para substitution, di substitution, or ortho. Or this is tri substituted. They're actually little tables, and you actually <coughs> examine that little, those little tiny blips, and you can say, boy, this looks like a para di substituted something. Like that. Are you talking about from this side? Just in that little area? Yeah, in this little region right up here. Oh. Is it the table? Oh, is it the table? Like it yeah, of... now, in the, in, the, in the expensive lab manual that we didn't make you buy, there was a whole page of those. Oh, man. And, uh, and so, well, you kind of get what you pay for. <laughs> and a $300 book to get that little table didn't seem like a good use of your money to us. So, but the, the old lab book that the, the students used to use, had about a 50 or 60 page section on NMR alone with a whole bunch of examples. And that's one of the reasons it was valuable. Uh, there's, there's enough information available now online, and with your textbook, you're, you, you'll do just fine about that. Okay? But just be aware of that. This is real typical of a single substituted benzene that you're looking at for the rest of the experience now. Okay? now We've gathered about as much as we can from the IR. Let's look at the NMR. Proton NMR. And see what we can surmise from that. Now, mm -hmm. notice, interestingly, down here around 7, this is, a, this is important to us, between about 7 and 7.5, I've got five hydrogens. What does that suggest? Mm -hmm. Benzene ring with one thing attached to it, because the five hydrogens that are left indicate that there's one thing attached to the ring to remove the sixth. Does that make sense? So this looks like a mono-substituted benzene. The rest of it looks a little more complicated. These are things that are probably going to be then attached to the benzene. Let me zoom it in a little bit if we can. Try to put it in the middle. So we can look at it a little bit more closely. This is a great big triplet. And it says three hydrogens on it. I've got two hydrogens that are shown right here, blown up. It looks to me, even though there's some kind of noise here, one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five, probably six. Are you all right with that? So let's, oh, and then one, if it's two hydrogens, that's a triple. Okay, so let's look at some structural features that have to be there based on that splitting pattern. I've got three hydrogens that are split into a triple. What does that suggest? Three next door. CH3 right next door to a CH2. Yeah, we're not surprised at that. That's kind of a typical structural feature that we might find in a whole bunch of them. Then I've got a hydrogen, two hydrogens, that are split multiply. Now, one of them is split by four, four and one split by five. So I would suggest we've got to have this and this, this guy, which is split into four, are split into